Hello everyone, Kosher Bacon here, and welcome to episode 4 of Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, yeah, let's do this. Of all days I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori, but Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funny enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Siori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Is there no... No, I have audio. Alright, so I guess there's no music volume for whatever reason? Alright. Guess for Bacon, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. Can you please stop it with the dumb pose? It's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it, so that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think on days this important, she would try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And suddenly, I feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking, but... Maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all? Uh-huh. You should take a little responsibility for her, Gosher Bacon. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. How do you know about that? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. That's not a good explanation, Monica. But, I stammer, embarrassed. Did Zoe really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Holy smokes, I think this might actually start doing what it was supposed to do. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this would definitely help people hear the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own, giving it an almost professional feel. I think stuff's about to happen. The uh, music hasn't cut in yet, but we have sound, so I'm thinking that's intentional to start making me feel uneasy, because the whole time I've been playing this, there's been some background music. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sari's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one I haven't read before. Get out of my head, get out, get... It's just, get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just does What? Okay, stuff is happening. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Where's your bacon? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from anything Sayori has written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori, so... Ah, well, Alright, try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal, at least to wait for her, or to help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her feel really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's why I want to give to her. I reach Sari's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? That really is something a boyfriend would do, isn't it? And in any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like it. Like this. Isn't this kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Is this a nightmare? 
has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sorry, I wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe my own eyes are showing me. I suppressed the use of the vomit just yesterday. I told Sierra I would be there for her. I told her I would know what's best and everything will be okay. Then why, why would she do this? How can I be so helpless? Why did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I should have confessed to her. That's not what Sierra needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to hear about her. Then why did I confess for her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. That's why my thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like I've always had been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club, screw the festival, I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something. Okay, game. Fourth wall break. I had only one chance I wasn't careful enough. Now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. I still can do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Okay, game. I see what we're doing here. So this is what I was afraid of. What the fuck? Okay, Monica. Alright, so it wants me to go back and do this. The file is missing or corrupt. Yep, I... I'm not narrating this. This is the beginning of the thing, just watch video one, but her name's all scrambled. Oh my god. I think this is... Did it just... Enough with the pause. Okay, I guess I should be narrating this. Uh, start of the day, but Sayori doesn't exist somehow. Maybe I'm in an alternate reality where she doesn't exist. So I was just spacing out of school, thinking about clubs, going to join the anime club. Monica walks in, she wants stuff. There's nothing about arguing about your now. I much prefer to talk about something I personally enjoy and make something special of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. We're back. Sorry about that. I had to cut. Um, let's keep going. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but there's only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. That's not really boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. Besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica just say she? Hmm. Hey, KB. Hey, by any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could ever at least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please. Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could go check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, kosher bacon, you know that? It, it's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. I get the feeling that I've been set up. I mean, aside from the terrifying... Not terrifying, but the weird thing. Thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica, and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Dip. 
I can see that. I'm back. <laughs> and I brought a guest with me. I guessed. Seriously, you brought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean that, Suki. Anyway, welcome to the club, Kosher Bacon. All boys just gave me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me get this. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. And Suki, we go with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently not Suki. He's the one I don't recognize. This moment figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Matsuki and Jack as usual, and this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Matsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So, ran into Kosher, Blation, Kosher Bacon in the classroom, he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry, I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Why don't you come sit down, Kosher Bacon? We also have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room, opens the closet, meanwhile Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So now you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel at home, okay? Surprising that the literature club is my idea to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be so hard to start a new club. You can put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting up all the effort needed to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile, but it makes school events like festivals that much more important. I'm confident we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really high to find just these two. We are returns to the table, carrying the tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Eh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not. Insulted Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be my past. Might not be a past for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri finally smiles to herself and will leave. So, Kush should be? What types of things do you like to eat? Well, uh, considering how little I've read in these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Masaki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level, the level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me, and I like, and telling a good story in such a form world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious the way her lights up, the way her eyes light up, that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immersive to me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Okay, fourth wall break. Fair enough. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. How's that? Huh, I read a horror book once. I desperately try to grasp something I can relate to at the minimum, minimum level. At least right here, I might as well be having a conversation with a rock. <laughs> I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or it takes me to another world, then I can, really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. <sighs> hate horror. You're next. I think. Maybe. Oh, what is that? Well, I just... That's because I just over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually have to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Well, what gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud. Give that back. Fine, fine. Suki, you write your own poems? <laughs> well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. That's what you for her eyes. You won't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Suki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? And if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Matsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I got an idea. How about this? That's a keen way look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home, write a poem of our own, then next time we meet, we'll share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President Principal, after all. Vice Principal? Yeah. 
Vice President, not Principal. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Dr. Bacon? Hold well, on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? And though we reach the most important topic, come to only come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and um, I lose my train of thought. All three girls still back at me with dejected eyes, but I'm sorry, I thought. <laughs> eh? The girls exchanged glances before Monica joins back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Crochet Bacon. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four, and I've been trying really, really hard to find new members, and if we don't find one before the festival, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed and pro decision when it's like this? I feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed, so if writing poems is the price we need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls, right. Okay, I decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Oh, my goodness. Really? Do you really mean that, Crusher Bacon? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really didn't scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I'd be super pissed. Crusher Bacon, I'm so happy. We can become official an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You'll really be- you're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? <sighs> Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Michael looks over at me once more. Because you're making forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I reinvest the cast on Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. I thought I'd depart to the club room, make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending day every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to go across to one of the girls. We tried that, it didn't end so well. Alright, I just need to make the most of my circumstances, I'm sure good fortune will find me. I guess I'll start with writing a poem tonight. So, let's get to the gameplay aspect. I like when Papa comes home early, I like when he goes down, it looks like he didn't want to. When Papa is too tired for anything. Yeah, like I figured. Um, now there's only two of them. Which I'm guessing means that. Alright, let's try and see about Yuri as Natsuki goes away. No, I'm kidding. Yuri will probably die next if we focus on her. Whoever we focused on died last time. Let's see if the pattern repeats. Uncontrollable. Let's doki doki. That's her. Headphone. Headphones. Vitality. Together. Together. Melancholy. Marshmallow. Universe. So far it's been even split. Unrequited. Determination. After image. Uh, vibrant. Contamination. Imagination. Unrestrained. Electricity. Incongruent. Extraordinary. Childhood. Oh, that's her. Heartbeat. Yep. The hell was that? Hey, yeah, 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 I'm glad to see you didn't run away on us, uh huh? Yeah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my work. I went back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone's already hanging out. Thanks for, Thanks for your face. Being glitchy. Thanks for giving you power structure, Bacon. I hope this isn't too overwhelming to have a commitment for you. Making your dive head first into literature when you're not accustomed to. to, to Okay. <sighs> oh, come on, Lucky. Just wasn't You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you have any plans just to come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, you won't see the end of it. Natsuki certainly has a big mouth for uh, someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. You're covering the words. Get, get out of the way. And she's upset about it. She finds herself struck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Sorry, Gosh, Bacon. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Here she's not so good with a disappointed glance. Uh, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, 
if you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. I know it's not like that, right? I want to try and be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'll be happy to pick up a book or two if you want to. Are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president, I don't know, but I should help you get started on something you might like. Hey, we just your bag with a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked up a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so you should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I like despite me not reading much? Hey, thank you, I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Uh, everyone was settled in. I expect Monica to kick off some sort of some schedule of activities at the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Your face is already face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Me mom that took his mommy's around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time I feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse at the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first two pages. Ah, crap. I think she knows me, look at her. She sneaks another glance, I made her eyes meet for a split second. That only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just pacing out. No matter the sensing guy made her uncomfortable. Oh, that's fine. I was focused and I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? <sighs> well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... That's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Oh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's the story about anyways? Well, hmm. I'll look at the cover of the book. The book is titled The Portrait Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. It's basically about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison, and all the people trapped have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lost for blood, but the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to- Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. <laughs> that's kind of- That's kind of dark, and you already made it sound like he was going to be nice to her, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. What's this fourth wall this move this thing keeps talking about? <sighs> Are you really not a fan of that sort of thing, Kosher Bacon? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so I don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot you were into these things. She shows the line reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story is the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective, where horrible things happen not just because someone wants them to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless dead. Then suddenly... Okay. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. I, when I let things like books and brain fill my thoughts, my whole body gets incredibly... I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I'm talking too much. Oh, it doesn't show up in chat. Sure it doesn't. Attention to other people. Oh, I'm sorry. For that. Maybe I don't know. That's. I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're a passionate reader. At least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, that's. Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Yes. I mean, you don't have to, but what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book I put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here. Right? Right? Let's look into the seat next to you, right? Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. Better just reading in the company of someone else. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. Open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over the shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It's like she looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry, I was just bathing in the feeling of your body effect. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> here, this should work, right? I sat at my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, <sighs> I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy, when it's really a little bit, her shoulders are almost touching, it feels like my left arm's in the way, so I start to use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the pages. Here. Yuri takes her left arm, holds the side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I don't... I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides under her thumb as she flips it to her side. 
holding it like this will hold even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of your face and she's in the corner of my vision. You ready? Eh? To turn the page? Eh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. And glance over at your face for a second. Oh, it's me. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not really used to re You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. You no longer ask me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page feels like an intimate... Even so, turning each page feels... Almost feels like an intimate exchange. I thumb gingerly letting go of the front... Letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her, my side over to her side as she catches it with under her own thumb. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking of the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah, that's what you were talking about. Sorry, I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind, we didn't even get that far yet, so I don't know why that came into my head. Aha! Yuri, are you feeling alright? Eh? Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breath? Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Wait, it puts her hands to her chest as if to feel a heartbeat. I didn't even miss. Anyway, I'm fine. I need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Louis stands up, practically rushes onto the classroom. What on earth is that all about? Kosher bacon? Did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Gary was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, can't say I do. Are you worried about her? No. Oh no, not really. I was just making sure you didn't do anything to her. No, nothing. <laughs> no way. I believe you, silly. Mary just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start sharing our bonds with each other? Eh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we would get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up and make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Uh, it was meant to impress Yuri, so let's go to Monica first. Because Natsuki is going to get angry about it, I assume. Just have Monica, yesterday she seemed eager to read my poem, and I wanted her to know I'm putting in effort. Hi, Kosher Bacon. Have any great time so far? <laughs> yeah, good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions of the club, like new activities, things we can do better, I'm always listening. Okay, I got a suggestion. Can you not delete someone from reality, please? That, that's kind of weird. At least I assume you did it. I don't know. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flaunt until I'm more settled in. Anyway, wanna share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Gosher Bacon. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? That's the sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I had mark on my poem. Mm. Great job, Gosher Bacon. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations lower. That way, you always count when I put in some effort. <laughs> that sounds very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyways. You know, you really like this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Curious Mind is just totally, de totally detached from the reality. I don't mean it likes a bad thing, though, but sometimes I get the impression that she's totally given up on people. That is a bad thing, though. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets happy when you treat her with lots of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interactions, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think if she gets too simulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for a one time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri, I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Eh, already? I'm sorry for being late. I need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more than glad you took all the time you needed. Alright, thanks, Monica. I suppose I should go and get my poem now. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. You know, I'm going to read this again, even though I read it. Hole in the wall. But he wasn't looking at me, confused I frantically glanced at my spot. Oh, this is a continuation of the last one. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings, but the, my burned eye can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply f poems on flat sheets of paper? The frantic, the sound of frantic scrolling playing tricks on my ears, the room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. So what do you think? Yeah, it's very free form if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? <laughs> well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany, really. 
recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something done on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll get a big, big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Let's show it to Yuri. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh, what was that? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but ends up covering her whole face. I, uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't just, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh, that's, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a deep breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphor indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Huh, oh, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Hmm. Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words of the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell you. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and I've been through that myself. I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once you're, once again, once Yuri finds her true of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. But I have so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them, but building them, and them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It may take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gave you valuable feedback. That's it can be can be a little bit biased, though. Biased out. Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if you're always apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read you my? Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Goes through the light, the tension of my hair illuminated beneath the amber glow. They think it must be this one. The last remaining street light to have stood the test of time, the last to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. Okay, so I read this one already. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking of that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah, well, I just don't read script very often. I think that's what they call cursive. I think your handwriting is pretty. Eh, that's a relief. Cursive script, that's what it's called. I'm an idiot. Also, I like the poem, even though it's short, it really. It was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I might try something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Siri? Huh? Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all, Kosher Bacon. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you only did glance over it after all, but remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the farm is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? I, it's nothing, really. Yours is impressive, too, so... Yeah, if anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this. In the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Mr. Bacon. Ah, me too. Let's show it to Natsuki. Congratulations, you were picked last. You can always pick last. Why are you here? I pick you last every time. Well, that's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. Uh, just one second. Sorry about that. I'm drinking some water over here to keep my voice going longer. It's not like I said it was bad. It's just I didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'd like it. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetah can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah, I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? 
Because be honest, I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff, so people don't even take my writing seriously. That isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves or writing style or make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's, I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening, so I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice things are about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the ending, but made it full flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I just had to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki's feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. <sighs> but, yeah, I guess that's everyone. Yep, absolutely everyone. And glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's just everyone judged me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's one way my poem can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I'm oh, sorry. I guess that's what. I, I guess that's why I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. And my eyes land on Yuri Natsuki. They're gingerly exchanging sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. If they read in tandem, I will watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows fire on frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant a language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come up nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Kosher Bacon did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> Kosher Bacon liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Mitsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, you right? Eh? That's not what I... Uh, you, you're just... You always stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous because you're breaking appreciates my advice more than you appreciated yours. Huh, and how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you saying that... Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <laughs> Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Kosher Bacon started showing up. Natsuki? Uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This does not involve you. Taking out your own insecurities from others like that. You really act as young as you look. Natsuki. Me, look as tough. Do I... Well... This is getting crazy. Definitely might cut yourself on the video. Oh my bad, you already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, go on. Let's try to make him hear everything you really think. I'm sure I'll be heads over heels for you after this. Ah. Suddenly, you returns towards this dude as long as I stand there. Pressure bacon? She's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. I gotta get tired of it. Yuri, right. Yuri, right. Yuri, Yuri, Yuri! What is going on? Hi, Monica. <laughs> so what the hell was that, Monica? Your face? Hey, Dad. Got bad. <sighs> Alright, can't even confront my own club members properly. I wish I was able to be a little more sorry sometimes, but I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, so Natsuki runs out of the classroom. She's crying. She clicks the runs away. Oh dear. Well, looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri's walking back and forth with their palms before it. Yuri, I didn't mean it. I, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Kosher Bacon, 
Please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now, if you want. What do you mean by that, Monica? Tomorrow? Yuri looks at me like she must have said something, but he keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take that responsibility today. Kinda sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. It just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Kosher Bacon. It'd be just embarrassing with you listening. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really appreciate your... Extraordinary. She's extraordinary? Incongruent. Effulgent. Spacious. Uh, existence. Sensation. Captive. Embrace. Heaven sent. Massacre. Depression. Disaster. Agonizing. <laughs> Oh god, we're picking all the bad ways. Disoriented, intellectual, destiny, whirlwind, excitement. Oh, she's excitement. So what happened? Now that it passes, time the club meeting array. I've gotten more comfortable. Enter the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Kush Megan. Oh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or for Yuri's expression. But the wave yesterday's quarrel still hangs on the air a little. Um, Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading a manga at the desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes me into my arm and pulls me into the corner of the room. Not yesterday. I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Anyway, I'm happy you guys were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I have been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems, but whatever it was, it didn't, didn't make me think any less of you. I had already just said it, there's no way you can be a bad person. And now you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, <sighs> pressure bacon. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly, they make me a little too happy. I'm what's wrong with being happy. <sighs> now that you're such an understanding person, I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around and... <sighs> Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah! No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man, Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, no, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? She did completely forget. Monica, what are you doing? Just stop deleting people. I wanna... I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean anything as I said. I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, alright, what are you talking about? No, I'm not actually gonna say what the... Okay, okay I guess I just said it. <laughs> Did you do something yesterday? Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But, I'll accept your apology anyway if it makes you feel better about it. Besides, it's kinda nice to hear since I was afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> No, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate like you either. That's what you me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! I don't think the door open. <sighs> Monica steps in. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah, well, that's like you was. I was not. <laughs> what took you so long, anyways? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <sighs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I was wondering you played music as well, Monica. I had to give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. I'm still impressed. Aw, oh, thanks, Yuri. You should pay, play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is it that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Kasha Bacon. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping I could share it with you anyways. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, nope, not really. I chose not to bring up anything about the th anything the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki's already run off into the closet. That's Natsuki for you. Always hiding out in the closet. She probably jumps out at people in closets, too. 
Kosher Bacon. Um, since you compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. I planned it anyway. Okay, can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. <laughs> I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yeah, but I need to try and calm down. I wouldn't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Mary takes a deep breath, pulls out a copy of the book, her bag. I'm sure I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention yourself as well. Mary stands up and makes her way to the closet, and I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a little filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Mary hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm gonna plug this in at the teacher's desk, then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. So I'm surprised the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. So that's because of her long eggs. You are your previous elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Excellent, I'll be right back. I may as well walk with you. That's okay, you stay here. It wouldn't take long. Put your hand, your hair is out of the classroom. Ah. Did you really leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay, okay. I hope you get spine injuries from that stupid pose. Like, it, no one leans forward like that. You look like you're gonna bang your head into something. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. You always said it wouldn't take long. There's something holding her up. I'm bored, just waiting to go outside to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for you to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start hanging down the hallway. <laughs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <gasps> oh, it's not. <laughs> it's <gasps> a sharp intake. Like someone's sucking air through the teeth. <laughs> like that. Are they in pain? I reach for the corner and peer around it. Yuri. Yeah. Okay, time skip. I'm back! Thanks for waiting patiently. Gosh, you it. Did you like the oolong tea? Oh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Here he says the temperature. Oh, she cuts herself. She absolutely just cut herself back there, didn't she? The temperature on the kelp at 200 degrees. Is that... That's gotta be Fahrenheit. But... Was the game made in Japan? Maybe it was meant to imitate Japan, then translate it to... I don't know, but 200 feels excessive. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do it any less when I'm making tea for others, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> in that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Well, perhaps I will. Gary fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was landing it shown. And you noticed? I was doing a bit of thinking. I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. Well, it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Gary. Just don't push yourself too much. You're already warning about me, Kosher Bacon. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I wish I'd pour a cup of tea for each of us. Kosher Bacon, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor to her? Eh, why's that? It's a little easier on my back. Okay. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Eh, sorry, didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain very regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... <laughs> My your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! I have terrible reading posture. Fair talk. It's supposed to hurt your shoulders more than your back. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Also, bra. Like, I get Japan, that's not a thing or something, but support. It's important. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the books. I retrieve the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Here and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides, as if in sync we assume the same reading position last time, each one holding one half the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Here we slide closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Here it was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup? Here hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't actually touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears an intense reading expression, I can only presume the world around her has faded away, and I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup tea cup between my legs, and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. <sighs> Sorry, I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... that's okay, I won't take any. Eh, you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. I need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? 
Of course. He opens the book with both hands. She holds his thigh. I don't have any harder time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically on top of my leg. Well, in that case, he was already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her left, which says that the situation was completely neutral. That doesn't mean I can stop. That means... Hold on, what did that say? I guess. That means I can't stop here. I apparently put the chocolate in her mouth, and just like that, Yuri closes her lips around it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, kosher bacon? Sorry, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Kosher bacon? Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Kosher bacon? My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, kosher bacon. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, kosher bacon? Louis only presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Monica, can you please reverse time so I can kill her before this happens? Okay. That's the heavy breathing, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Um, it's time to share poems. Okay, we're gonna take a break from Yuri today, and I kind of want to read Monica's thing. Also, because screw it, Suki. Pleasure bacon. I think you saw something earlier you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excited when she's around you. It shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault, though. I guess that's why I have to explain it to all to you. So I think if you keep your distance, that'd probably be best for her. And while you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together. I at least have it together in the head. And I know how to treat my club members. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Give me just a second. Sorry about that. Had to blow my nose. <sighs> Save me. The colors, they won't. Bright, beauty, sir, flash, pierce, and let's get coffee, beating less noise, the noise, it won't stop. But, but, I, like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. Delete her. I know it's kind of abstract. Yes, it is somewhat abstract. I'm just trying to... Um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here is Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision, but that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when I'm... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Monica... That... That's my advice for today. Talk to Natsuki, I guess. Congratulations, you weren't picked last. I liked your last one better. Really? Oh yeah, I can tell you are a little more daring with this one, but you're really not good enough for that yet. It fell flat. That may be true, I just want to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. Fair enough, I'm still into this, and I wouldn't expect you to find your star right away. I mean, everyone in the club works really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed you were spending some time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. I'll probably be able to learn something from it. Amy likes spiders. This is the same poem as last time. Uh, 
Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. Of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Like anyone would agree the subject of this poem is anyone who would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Sometimes you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. And that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting you, it makes them happy. I think people really need to respect others for liking weird things, such as the two girls in this, such as two of the girls in this very club, whom I respectfully won't name. <laughs> Hmm. Alright. I am not Sherlock Holmes, but I think she might be talking about Monica and Yuri. Because there are only two girls in this club other than her. Kind of ironic, I even in my own place of comfort, I can't have people respect me. Jeez, now you make me complain too much. What did I do? What it's worth, I respect you. Well, I guess thanks. But it's kind of obvious that you respect Yuri more, so whatever. We're done sharing, you can leave now. Can I not? She... <laughs> Okay, she's fine now. We're waiting for this. Let's see what you've written today. You always stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Kosher bacon? This might once one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of technique worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Very visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. <sighs> that makes me so happy. It's amazing. So amazing you feel invalid, because you're bacon. Everyone that everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. <laughs> I want you to write a poem I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Crusher Bacon? I'm not being weird, right? I'm having a little harder time than usual concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed. But right now I just want you to read my poem too. Okay? Wheel. Rotating wheel, turning axle, grinding. Yep. What is this? Existence of God, drowning a pink written in blood, a player written in time devouring snakes with human eyes, a thread canopy, all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope, all these stakes expand, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disappearing, the existence of God, and then. What the hell is this? Breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing god, breathing blood, breathing holy snakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing player, breathing sky, breathing wheel. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on the, the pen. <laughs> that, that, a pen of all of you. On your pen, I did read that right. A pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I am... Um, I just really like the way that it writes, so I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. <laughs> oh, hi. I think she's back. Okay, everyone. We're done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone can come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Oh, sort of. <sighs> do we need to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good. Just a few days, we'll end up embarrassing ourselves and start getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Kosher began joining. We started some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complaints and we still only have four members. And the time festivals are only good for us to find more, you know? What's this about getting new members anyways? We already have enough to be considered an official club, so more members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. That's okay. I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place to be so intimate you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Kosher Bacon? Uh -huh. Oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Coco Show Bacon to you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Kosher Bacon joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Kosher Bacon isn't passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider other, our options for once. Our opinions for once. Monica has clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. She's going to delete you, dude. Do that? That's not true at all. I'm sure you ain't Gosho Bacon want to get more members, so... Right? 
Yuri says nothing, I say nothing. I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I'd probably be lying. Still, if it's up, still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation. Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club? It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. That's a club! That's, a, that's what a club is! A group of people on an organized thing hanging out. Could be a large group, could be a small group, but it's a club. Typically with some common interest, like literature. Or this horrifying game. Oh. I think everyone here saw it the same way I did. But that doesn't mean Mario gets getting new members or anything. Kosha Bacon, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of this, anyways? What is during this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is this a crime? Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just wanted a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club? Is, is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't, there aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me? She's not taking anything away. No, Kosher Bacon. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I would have joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things would race. Rizuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Mitsuki, Mitsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious Brett? I, mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed her. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decisions right for the club. What about you, Kosher Bacon? What do you get out of this club? You repeated the same question as Monica. It's like giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. And that's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of... Did it rise just... Oh my god. Why is it dripping blood? With each change in members, the idea of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So, you, so if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can talk to Nuts. We can all talk to Nuts again tomorrow. Yuri Nuts. Hey, Yuri. Eh? I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica... Her eyes not bleeding anymore. Good. I'm gonna do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Kosher Bacon? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm gonna chat for a little bit with Kosher Bacon before we leave, just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me, as President. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. The Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a little hectic lately, haven't they? Kosher Bacon, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I'd really hate to see you unhappy. I kind of feel like I'm responsible for that as president. Oh no, it's happening again. I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Atsuki is and everything, and how Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> that dumb pose. Sometimes I feel like you and I are the only real people here. <sighs> Goodbye, fourth wall. And 16th wall, and 357th wall. You know what I mean? But it's weird, because in all the time we've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. But there's just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things that not only you could understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet. No. Stop that. My oh boy. This game. Intellectual. Who's that? I, I saw that. Tenacious, Electricity, Crimson. That was her. Look down there. That was her. Destiny, Philosophy, Contamination, Wonderful. Oh yeah, that's her. Waterfall. Waterfall? Was that her? Rain Club. No. Incongruent. What? What? What is going on? Romance, unrestrained, uncontrollable, determination, extraordinary, 
happiness, analysis, depression, starscape. Oh, that's a little too eager. I'll get vibing going. I think I might have to end the episode here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.